We'll have to wait for the conclusion of this year's Ohio Cup until September, so be patient. Meanwhile, the Guardians got themselves back into Nick Kurtz territory for 2024. You are Locked On Guardians. Your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Uh, over there is Justin. I am Jeff. Cinnamon is is joining us uh, to be a co-host on the, this one. Uh, hopefully, she won't smack me in the face, unlike last time she was on the podcast. But uh, Smack in the face to watch this team sometimes. It is. Uh, Wait, this I got was smack a... In the face. I, you know what I did at one point tonight? I walked away and I emptied my dishwasher. That's how that's how uh, much of a distraction I needed after that one. That was that was it literally was, a punch in the face. <laughs> it was a weird game. Like <sighs> ugly? Trying, weird, as weird as weird yeah. ugly is how you're defining it now. Well, it's like even, you know, the it, all the sloppiness aside. Uh, just things like TJ Ferdell stealing that home run from Ramon. Like it was kind of weird to see Larry on Loriano hitting third and then it almost paid off. And then, you know, it didn't because TJ Ferdell is a, a pretty good defensive center fielder out there, but that's what I wanted to ask you. That, that's really at this point in the season. I mean, I know you're, people are going to say, ah, oh, the guardians are only four and a half back in the division. There's still a lot of time to play and they've got uh, what? Six games left with the twins. I just want to learn. And they've played so division. well in the division this year. So that's why there's every reason to believe they're going to play so good in that series. I I just want to learn more about next. So every game it should it should just be okay, what did we learn today about next year? I mean, is it is it reasonable to say that you you we should go into next year thinking this team could still contend for a division title? Is that still a reasonable expectation for 2024 at this time? With health and what we've seen with the Twins, I think so. Like, again, that's always this year's health has been extraordinarily bad, right? So if you can get Bieber and McKenzie back with those young pitchers, though, I think we've learned this year that there's no guarantee that young players will take a step forward in year two. Uh, there's enough to think that they can contend because they're in the American League Central. If they're in any other division, I would say no. Literally, maybe the NL Central, but other outside of the Centrals, there is not a conference where I think they'd be better than third. So you can grade the rest of this season on what What do we learn about next year for the Guardians? What, what, what do we learn today? I mean, today we learned that um, don't hit the ball to TJ Friedel. Obviously, don't stop, it, stop doing that. Uh, Bo Naylor still has a lot of work to do defensively. We had a question the other day by Pat asking how he felt about his defense. We both said, you've seen flashes. Like, obviously, the athleticism there. Tonight was one of those games that you see that he is just not a finished product defensively, so there's still work to do there. Um, I'm not learning anything watching Noah Syndergaard pitch other than the fact that he is a body that has an arm that throws above 90 miles an hour. That's that's all we're learning there. I'm learning nothing about Daniel Norris I didn't already know, as opposed to Cody Morris or... Joey Cantillo, Franco Aleman. I mean, I'm not learning yeah, anything I mean, there. Uh, that's where I know we're kind of hitting that point where, you know, uh, listen, we're in the final stretch of the year, and I know Tim Heron, what, can't be sent down again? If he and comes he, back up, yeah, he I can't yeah. be sent back down again. So just, like, I know you're tired of Daniel Morris. I'm giving him a new name. He's Daniel Morris now. Uh, Daniel Norris. So, like, Let's let Heron pitch the rest. Of it. Like he, we talked about in early July, there was a stretch there where he was a really consistent pitcher for that relative to all things when you look at FIP. So like Daniel Norris is going to help this team in a year. Uh, Daniel, I think uh, Tim Heron will help them. Daniel Norris won't. Michael Kelly's not going to help them in a year when guys are healthy. Thor isn't going to help them in a year. Cole Calhoun isn't going to help them in a year. I agree. Let's give the at-bats to the guys who can actually legitimately help this team. In yeah, year. thankfully, they didn't try to start Cole Calhoun against the lefty today, which would have been absolutely hilarious. Instead, they put Gabby Arias at first against the lefty, who isn't much better. But you want to know what? He hit a home run off Andrew Abbott, 
his at bats and a big were home okay. Run they weren't yeah, they weren't like he didn't have the greatest at bats, but he was in them. And at this point, like we said yesterday, you just have to find he's, out. He's where looked this lost leads. for so long that it was nice to see yeah. that level of performance, I, honestly. His approach at the plate reminds me a lot of Johnny Peralta. Johnny Peralta had good power the other way, and we've seen that when Gabby drives the ball, it's it's always the opposite field. He has better power to right center. So it just baffles me that he has a hard time hitting lefties considering you would think a guy with that that approach of power would would hit lefties a lot better. So it could just be that he needs the reps and it just he's not seeing the ball well. I mean, he he's done things in the past where he's you know, use virtual reality to try to improve his pitch, uh, his pitch selection. There's things he's worked on in the past that show you that can get there. And I'm not even suggesting that Gabby Arias is going to be the answer. Like there's things that have looked rough so far, but like I said, at least he's playing, at least you're finding out about, okay, is this our guy next year? Brian Rokia had three hits. Great. He was in the lineup. And it was kind of, if this team was competing for a playoff spot right now, I would have been, you know, it would have been mind boggling to not have Andres Jimenez in the lineup, but, yeah, he, we have so much data now that he does hit lefties well. Like he right. should never play not play against lefties. He should be. But I'm not a, even like, upset about that because it got Tyler Freeman in the lineup, which he needs yeah. to play too. So like, if again, if they were competing for again, a playoff spot lefties, right now, well. so it's like let let Freeman play against a righty and let and then his, his. I don't know, and any Freeman just needed at bats, and that, you know yeah. it's fine. That's that's the one thing I'm not going to split hairs about in an ugly game. I had nothing against Freeman, like. Again, I just at this point, if you really feel like this team can can win next year in the division, you have to find out. You have to spend the rest of the year getting some answers to figure out who should be you should be relying on to carry that division title next year. And, and that's not Daniel Norris. That's not Cole Calhoun. I think it's reasonable to say Ramon Laureano has at least a chance. Team. Yeah, yeah. It's not Daniel Norris. It's not Cam Gallagher. Which you know, you know. You know thinking good thoughts for Kim Gallagher. He doesn't have a concussion because that's serious. He is uh, undergoing tests right now. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Agreed. Yeah. And first off, just wishing him the best. Yeah. It's always serious. If you're undergoing a concussion test and he does have a slight history of that. So anytime you got multiple concussions, that's, that's not good. Um, This defense has to improve somehow though. I mean, you, we were talking about over the weekend and I just pulled the numbers today. You know, they're last year. They, they were, sixth in baseball and outs above average um, at 19. And I know we're going to have some people in our comments getting mad about how we read stats. We're going to address that too. <laughs> um, yeah. This year, they're, they're, they're four outs above average. They're 12th in baseball and in, in defense that way. They have fallen a long way defensively, and tonight you can see it. And can you blame it on youth? Because you largely have the same amount of guys from last year. Like, who who do you have back from last year? Rokio's playing short instead of Ahmed. That's an upgrade. Jose, it's, you know, Miles Straw's in center and, and Quan's in left and Loriano's in right. Like, Bo Naylor is the only other guy that's that's kind of new on the infield other than Gabby playing first, but he made a good play tonight and he just, you know, got the short end of it. So you can't, can you really blame the defense, the, the defensive regression this year on youth? Even though, like you said, no. some of these guys are still trying to figure out if they work at the major league level. I, I think, you know, we've seen it's interesting because you think the regression shouldn't be there because the outfield defense should be better, right? You know, putting Brendan in for Gonzalez for most of this year and anything, but you know, reminder that Ahmed was somehow worse at shortstop. And that's, that's a lot of at bats there. First base, no, you've had shifting. Josh Bell. Yeah. yeah. Josh Bell in there. And I think the shift played into their advantage because, uh, you know, they really found ways to let uh, Andres use his range to help cover things up. But I think that's what we're seeing. In the, and then I think catching defense, right? Like, I don't know how much that reflects in this, but going Zanino from hedges, either. Yeah. yeah, going from hedges to Zanino and Naylor is significant. Um, that is quite the shift, even with hedges decline. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of components. Today was an ugly day. They've had some good days, but today was definitely one of the ugliest days we've seen. Uh, it's just mind-boggling that, that, that this team last year had to play perfect baseball and and that's not to say they didn't have nights last year that weren't sloppy and this is just one night but you can see the defensive metrics show that they have not been the same group defensively this year 
And that's one of those things that's outside of the shift being banned. And we know that Ahmed Rosario, like you said, wasn't good defensively and that, you know, the shift being banned hurt him. And then, you know, going to Josh Bell at first base wasn't good for a long time. But Owen and Owen Miller, surprisingly, Owen Miller was a good defender at first base last yeah. year. And by, and there's, by uh, stats, not necessarily by eye test, but yeah, that was an interesting one. And, and, you know, we've talked about the flukiness of Miles Straw this year and, and the way the defensive metrics have hurt him. But it's just one of those things that this is a team that wins on pitching and defense and not scoring a ton. And we've seen the bullpen regress. It's just defense is not one of those things this year. Fundamentals are just not one of the things this year I expected to back up, but it kind of seems like they have. And, you know, it isn't, you know, Ro- okay, so Rokio didn't make an error tonight. I don't know if he would have gotten made that throw regardless. I don't think he would have gotten that runner in that situation, but that goes as an error. I just don't know if it's youth or if I don't know, it's just the defense. Did they lose their defensive coach? Is that the guy that was a JT McGuire that went to, or no, who was it? Kyle Hudson that went to. He was an outfield coach. Boston. They lost an outfield okay. coach and they lost a roping hitter coach. So I think it's just a lot of changes at once. And then, you know, the, the, we've seen some regressionary data with a lot of players and yeah, you know, I don't want us to get too bogged down in the defensive and all in an ugly game. So why don't we take our first break here, come back, handle some of uh, the comments, talk about some of the rotationary stuff. Um, talk about a little of Joey Cantillo start on today's locked on guardians. I love a new sponsor. We got another one, Nutrafol. Uh, you don't have to choose between... Uh, I'm sorry. Let me read this again. Men think losing hair is inev- inevitable. Take in care of your hair's future with Nutrafol. Science-backed hair growth supplement for men. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist-recommended ha- hair growth supplement. Clinically shown to improve your hair growth. Visible thickness and visible scalp coverage. Nutrafol's hair growth supplements use physician-formulated natural science-backed ingredients. Their drug-free patent technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual health. Go to Nutrafol.com slash men to take their health wellness quiz. Identify causes of your thinning hair, and Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better hair health through your whole body through whole body wellness. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting root causes of thinning, such as stress, hormones, environments, nutrition, lifestyle, meta, uh, metabo- metabolic changes as well. And it works. In a clinical study, 84% of men showed improvement in their hair after six months of taking Nutrafol's men's grow- hair growth supplements. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the code Locked On MLB. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men and enter the promo code locked on that's neutral dot com slash men promo code locked on mlb guardians come back home on thursday to face the detroit tigers at 7 10 you can listen to the hometown broadcast on your sirius xm app by just searching guardians all right you wanted to get into well, okay. Let's address the. Uh, you can address the comments first. Okay. I was gonna say so that think, the catcher thing too. Yeah. So I think some people misunderstood our comments yesterday. Like we weren't getting in the weeds about like lack of uh, stats with Logan Allen. Our whole point is when you go and you look at advanced data, all blue is a concern because what we're looking at is predictive data, and in general, we're just looking at predictive data because. Uh, you don't want to have the next Cream Garcia, the next Fausto Carmona. You don't want to have the next Oscar Gonzalez, right, from last year, where we got people mad at us a year ago when we looked at the data and like, this is not sustainable. So what we are That's doing what? is pointing, yeah, and we're pointing out the counterpoint here where, yes, his data isn't great on there, but we're explaining why we're not concerned. So some people seem to think we're like talking bad about Logan Allen when we're like, hey, there are reasons why he might be able to achieve when most can't. That's all that was. So also we we both watch the games and we look at yeah. the data. We do both. Uh, nobody's a fan of data. It's about pointing. Uh, it's about painting the entire picture. And if you think that uh, major league teams don't look at this data, I mean, just look at who created the website. Major league baseball itself created the website. So if you think these teams don't care about the data, it's just there for whatever. It's there for a reason. 
Teams have this data. Teams collect a lot. Teams collect a lot of data. They collect more data than what's out there. So if you think they don't care about it, then I'm sorry. You've been led wrong by someone who told you they don't. Yeah. So it, again, we think that there are reasons to think that he can overachieve, even though the data isn't always the super hottest in terms of Savant. So that's all we're explaining. We still think there is a good opportunity for him. Uh, we'll see how many starts any of these young arms will have left. Joey Cantillo had a start today. I know we're going to talk catching in a bit, but I, I would like to see him in the, he's already on the roster. I'd like to see him get a big league start. His next start, you did the math, is going to be his highest inning total ever, likely, right? If he goes five innings in his next start, he went five innings tonight. If he goes five innings next start, he'll now have a, he'll have a career high in innings. Um, he's still a couple starts away from career high in starts. He'll be two away next time he comes out. So, yeah, he's getting to that point. The fact that he has made it to the month of August with no injury list trips, with no skip starts. I mean, he's made he's made thir- he's made fourteen appearances now this year. Fourteen starts or fourteen games and eleven have been starts because he's followed some guys uh, out of the pen. So, the fact that he's made it this far healthy is is a good sign to begin with, anyway. And his stuff's not you know backing up. It's not like he's wearing down. He was still throwing ninety five tonight. He still looked really good. Usual control stuff. I mean, he walked two batters. He hit a batter. He threw 95 pitches in five innings. Those are still things that he has to work on. Um, and again, we're talking about a guy who, like I said, is going to is five innings away from reaching his career innings or his uh, season high in innings. So you can see that he doesn't have a whole lot of reps. I mean, he again, he missed all of 2020. He missed most of 2021. He missed half of last season. So this is a guy who just for the, again, this is the first time he's pitching April through September for the first time in his career. So. Um, the reps, you know, aren't there for him yet, but I, I agree. I'd like to see him get a look at some point this season. I take anybody at this point. This is not a, you know, I don't want to sit here and say Daniel Norris. Daniel Norris is not the hill to die on with this team. Cause it's not like he's the reason they're not playing well, but um, like I said, the rest of the season, I want to grade the team on how much did we learn about 2024 and if they can, who can help them win a division title next year. And odds are it's Joey Cantillo and not Daniel Norris. I'm not saying, Cantillo should be the the lefty long reliever the rest of the year, but I'd like to see him get a shot if they have an opportunity before his before they decide he's had too many innings and he's got to sit for the year. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it just makes more sense to run with the guys who he said who can help than the ones who aren't going to. And every plus, it'd be nice for me because every time Daniel Norris comes in, I get a, a text from Justin just seething with rage at more Daniel Norris. So I, I look forward to. <laughs> Just the end of those in general. Uh, should we <laughs> should we switch over to uh, discussing Cam Gallagher and his unfortunate injury? Well, he's definitely not going to play on Thursday. I'm pretty sure that's out of the question. If he's undergoing concussion tests, I think he's unlikely to play Thursday. The broadcast said that Gabby Arias was their emergency third catcher. It used to be Ernie Clement and I think Tyler Freeman. Well, Tyler Freeman just came off the injured list, the shoulder problem. So probably going to try to avoid that. Right. So I don't think you can go with a a one catcher on your bench. It doesn't sound, nobody has mentioned anything about David Fry in like a week or so. So I don't think he is any closer to be coming back and being an option. So Sandy Leone's hurt in AAA. It's really down to uh, Brian Lavastida coming back on the 40, which, you know, we talked about multiple times or, if you go with the option that you can punt in a few weeks, if you need to, Zach Collins can come up like he's Cam Gallagher is an elite framer. He is so mediocre when it comes to throwing runners out. I know the pitchers love him. Zach Collins probably doesn't do either of those things. Any of those things. Well, he's no. barely caught in triple A. That's the problem. He's barely catching. It is, it is Brian Lavastida. And whoever is healthy and can be in AAA that day to back Lavasita up, it's pretty bad. Um, yeah, I texted you today, didn't I? That that the the Cardinals release or the Cardinals. I'm going back yes. too many years. The Diamondbacks release Carson Kelly. Uh, Carson Kelly is not like removed too far removed from being like an a nice backup, like a a, a fringe average backup for I mean, a he week was or a, two. He was a central piece of the Goldschmidt deal as a potential. He was supposed to be the starter. Yeah, well. That worked out good. Look, he's he's 
I think he's like one out above average this year. He's thrown out he's thrown like twenty percent of runners, which isn't bad. Not a great framer. He's a light hitter, which you know he's a backup catcher. It is what it is. I would I would really be fine taking a flyer on Carson Kelly for a few days till you see what happens. Like I, I think Lavastia makes a lot of sense to re-add, but I think you got to think about that a little bit longer considering the roster ramifications in the offseason. Because if you put him back on now, you kind of have to ask yourself, are you committing to him being part of this roster next year? Because if you don't have to make that decision right now, I think it makes some sense not to. But I, to if me, they don't go I'm out like- of – I feel like he's done enough. Like, it, but then again, that's probably not surprising with this thing where I'm like, just go ahead and 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 add him back in. Like, you're gonna do it anyways. Just are you though? Out. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying. I think I so. Think, I I think he is. I think they I should because I think he'll get taken. But yeah, but I think they don't have. They always like to carry three catchers on that roster. I just I don't it's think it's very bizarre. Well, Fry's hurts. So that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I think I think for them doing it on a short term decision might be a little bit much you because you can put other guys off the I just i just think collins is is not good they don't they just don't have a good option unless you add carson kelly which hey maybe well, they no, do no matter what play. if you have to if, if david fry is not ready to come back from the injured list which it doesn't sound like it he is you're gonna have to add somebody off the fort anyway whether it's collins or, or la vestita or you know carson kelly one of those guys you have to add somebody off the 40 anyway I would I would prefer yeah. not Collins because he's he hasn't caught most of the year anyway. But no, it's ten of the last twelve starts in the uh, minor leagues have been Lavastida, and yeah. one was Leon and the other was Collins, and he DH yeah, those yeah. days. He's really the only guy. Leon is hurt, so yeah. So it's it's Lavastida or it's Carson Kelly or you make a trade, you know, make a, a minor league trade. I have no idea who's out there, but yeah. And hopefully David Fry comes back soon. It's not a big, or Cam Gallagher comes back soon. Although I'd be fine with replacing Cam Gallagher with Carson Kelly too. Cause why not? Right. What's the difference? Cause Cam Gallagher is not going to be here next year. That's what I'm saying though. If you, if you re add, or will he, are, are you sure he won't be here next year? Mm, you're not adding, you're not really helping my, my rant from earlier about next season. I know. But... Not really helping me. It just feels like hopefully, hopefully Gallagher's okay, but I would, I would definitely rather see Carson Kelly. No, I agree. Uh, should we take our next break and then come back and talk about this next series and kind of finish up uh, today's episode of the show? If we have to. Do you want the chance to win more money with less picks? Head to Sleeper, the number one sports app where you can win up to 100 times your money on just two or more fantasy baseball picks. If you think that somebody, maybe Jose Ramirez, maybe Ramon Laureano, maybe Brian Rocchio is going to hit a big homer on Thursday. Maybe Xavier Curry makes you feel very good on Thursday night against the Tigers. I think that sounds pretty good. Uh, we sure do on Sleeper, and you can swing for the fences up to 100 times payouts. All you have to do is choose two or more players that you like and select more or less on their stat category. So more home runs for Ramon Laureano, Cole Calhoun, more strikeouts for Xavier Curry, hits and more. Get your picks right and you could win big. Use promo code Locked On and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. And that game on Thursday is seven ten in Cleveland. If you can't make it to the game, listen to it on your Sirius XM app. Just search Guardians. I got nothing. <laughs> like again, this is one of those games where yeah. I'm like, I, I just what what did you learn tonight? What did what did the Guardians learn? I think I've said all they need to say. We learned that. Everybody's a better really. option than Daniel Norris, and we, there's not much to take away. I mean, it's like you're going through. I talk, you know, I, I put rotation change, and the reason I put rotation change is, you know, we talked about maybe it's it's Xavier Curry, but maybe you know, it, let's be honest, Thor's had four starts. It's probably his best four starts of the year in a row that he's had. 
but not only is he not a part next year, he's just been mediocre at best. Uh, I do wonder with, you know, in September around the corner, we're what, two weeks away. Uh, when rosters expand, this team can go up to uh, 14 starters. I wonder if with or 14, sorry, 14 pitchers. I wonder if they consider that six man rotation then. Um, as a way to cut back on some of the rookies' workloads. Uh, again, if you don't have all the vets in there, I don't think it's, you know, the guys aren't quite as set in their ways. Like, like if Shane Bieber's in the rotation, you're not going to six. But with the slapdash rotation, maybe they try that. You know, it, it'll be interesting to see how, they, like I said, I'd like to see Cantillo get some opportunities. The rookies, yeah, I know there's no hard innings limit, but if a guy scuffles through two starts, I He's probably going to be done for the year after that. Like, you know, it's, there's going to be things they do. Part of me wonders, you know, he threw 70 pitches last time out. Cal Quantrill did. And he's probably going to do one more rehab start, which they're thinking will take place next Tuesday or Sunday, this Sunday. I wonder, okay, so the Sunday is the 20th. That gives them 11 days until September 1st and rosters expand. I wonder if they'll kick the can down the road on Cantillo where, or not Cantillo, uh, Quantrill, not re add until September 1st. They don't have to make any roster moves with that until then. Cause who are you moving down? I mean, moving down, I mean, please, dear God, say it's Daniel Norris or, or Michael Kelly or any, anybody like that. But I wonder if they kind of kick the can for a couple more days and see if they can't wait till September to make add to their roster. And I agree. If you wait till September and you add, you can only add one more pitcher, but I wonder if they wait till then. And I agree at, at that point you're asking, okay, is, is Beaver coming back? Is, is McKenzie coming back? Quantrill should be back by then. If there's no setbacks, I would rather see Quantrill take Noah Syndergaard spot because you still should have like Quantrill is not a, a li- unlike Logan Allen, right? Cause that's the same argument. Look, Cal Quantrill's, if you look at his, savant data from last year it wasn't pretty like it doesn't it didn't say he should have been pitching as well as he was last year but he did and then he was probably hurt all year too with you know obviously the world baseball classic is to blame for all the world's problems yeah (laughs) but uh he still is still a guy you should count on next year as part of the rotation because you're going to need someone like him in there depending on what's going on mckenzie and bieber and someone who can help with Williams and Allen and Bybee next season. So I would rather just see a straight out Quantra replace the center guard. But I guess if you want to try a six man rotation to, to limit some innings, that might be a way to go. And I just wonder if they won't wait till September 1st to do that, considering the injured list options. Yeah. No, Especially now, sense. now they have to add a catcher most likely. Oh, yeah. Cal's only on the 15 and he still counts against the, yeah, so he's he's not a, a change, but and then it's also like, you know, the idea of a six man rotation. Oh, hopefully, everyone comes back, you know, and, and we see that like Bieber and McKenzie and you and I were making much ado about nothing. Uh, I would love that to be the case. I don't think it's going to be the case, but making sure that there are those opportunities for other players to, or, you know, they, well, there's going to be opportunities for everyone to kind of go out there and throw, and I'd like to see. Cantillo before some of those opportunities potentially go away or have to go to the vets as they get healthy. I wouldn't mind seeing Cantillo this year, but I also, I don't know. I, yeah, I guess one start wouldn't hurt just as a reward for yeah being healthy and developing all year. That would be a nice, you know, carrot to give him. I think we're both going to wind up being wrong on the Beaver thing. We talked, we've said so many times this year about, is Beaver going to be pitching somewhere else next year? And I don't, I don't think there's enough time in the season left for him to come back no. and pitch. He's going to be here. Because the difference to him with him and Kluber is Kluber has a longer track record than Beaver or did when they made the tra- trade to Texas. And Kluber is coming off a line drive up his forearm, whereas Beaver is coming off an elbow injury. Those are very different injuries. I just don't see a team out there dangling enough to get Shane Beaver where you're like, okay, it makes sense to move him. So you're like you said, I think you said this yesterday, whether or not you he pitches for this team next year and you're in contention, you let him walk for a draft pick or you trade him at the deadline. But and, and McKenzie thing, you hope that he doesn't need surgery, because at this point, if he needs surgery, then you're talking about 
lost in 2024. Miss all it's going to be like the Shane McClanahan situation, which we're seeing. He's going to miss all. He would miss all the yeah. next year, and then you don't even know what you're getting back in 2025 at that point either, because it would be a long time yeah. off. So yeah, with Bieber, I guess I guess we're gonna have to go back and delete that episode that said uh, what day what days we guessed he'd be traded on this winter, because I don't think it's going to happen now. I don't I don't even know if there's enough time this year left for for either of those guys to even make a start at this point. No, I agree. I, I don't think there's much enough of a time for for it to happen. I think it's, I mean, maybe they can, maybe they can make a start. I just don't think we're going to see enough. that's going to make anyone feel comfortable. Um, no, I never feel comfortable after watching this terrible game today. Uh, we I feel will, less comfortable talking about it. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll see. Detroit is on, on deck. They've been pretty terrible. The twins, they beat the are, twins. They just beat the twins. Yeah. They, I know they, what the last two the games twins are right? sad. Okay. The, the guardians, are, the guardians are sad. The twins, I'm sorry. The twins are sadder. The Guardians essentially just decided to throw up their hands and go, I don't know, at the deadline. The Twins did the same thing, and they spent massive money on the massive yes. disappointment that is Carlos Correa, and they got hosed in the Tyler Malley trade. They went out and gave Christian Vasquez big money, <laughs> and they're just like, I don't know. Maybe we want to go to the playoffs. Maybe we don't want to lose our 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 playoff series for the 20th straight year that we get to the playoffs. Like <laughs> The Twins are just as sad considering – they should be like 10 games out in front of this division at this point, And they're not. No, I agree. It's definitely it, especially with the money they spent and coming in and, and the pitching they added and they should be, they better. really miss Luisa rise right now. I mean, Pablo Lopez has been fantastic, but fantastic. I don't think they regret that trade at all, but no, but their offense is pretty bad. Yeah. It's just they thought that to... DH and Carl or, or Byron Buxton was going to solve his problems and he's hurt again. And, He's yeah. been a disaster because he's on my fantasy team. So of course you got the, tw- you can all thank me for jinxing Carl or not Carl's Korea, Byron Buxton, even though it didn't thank you. Variant. But uh, thank you all for watching. Speaking of thank yous, rating, reviewing, downloading, it helps doing your part being in every day uh, in the comments. Glenn, someone who always feels like every day he's popping up in Glenn. the comments. Show. And uh, thank you. And go, go guardians. Go. Maybe not go and win. Maybe get back in the next. Tank for Kurtz. Tank for Kurtz.